Marichador on the west coast of Australia. Prospective heli cowboys are relaxing after a hard day's training. Tim Cousins, 32, needs only a few more hours flying time for his pilot's license. Nine months ago, Tim was a highly paid IT specialist living in London before he decided to quit his yuppie lifestyle and emigrate to Australia. His goal? To herd cattle by helicopter. And in two days, he has his first flight. I didn't find the work very rewarding at all. And I thought, I, n I need to do something where I've got uh, instant gratification, you know. I can see the, the benefits of the work I'm doing straight away. And as I say, some people would think I'm crazy that I've given up such a, a such a what some people would say, a fantastic lifestyle to, uh, to live out in the dirt and the heat and, and get very dusty every day. Becker's helicopter school attracts students from all over the world. Tim's colleagues include former architects, marketing managers and engineers. Many of them saved for years, sold their houses or took out loans to become one of Australia's flying cowboys. This is their master, Mike Becker. He's been a heli cowboy in Northern Australia for three years now. The New Zealander has been a professional pilot for 17 years. And the droop stop. Uh, oh, the Hughes 300 and the Bell 47 are excellent for mustering because they've got a much bigger downwash, they make a lot of noise, um, they, they're good to manoeuvre and the cattle respond very well to them. Uh, the Robinson's fantastic as well and the economies of scale of a Robinson are, are, are good when you're chasing cows. But you just feel a lot safer in something a little bit bigger and that, that pushes a bit more air around. Today's the last day of school-based training before actual cattle herding. Tim needs to be able to have the helicopter under complete control to be able to drive the cattle. The best training for this is to transport outboard cargo. Tim should learn other things as well as precise flying. Sling loading is far from easy. It has to be the hardest skill I've learned with flying helicopters. <sighs> Having just got used to flying a helicopter, we now have to learn to fly a helicopter with our heads out the door looking at the ground, not looking at visual references in front of you. And I now have a lot more respect for the guys that do it. When you see it on TV and you see a helicopter fly in, drop a load and disappear again in seconds, it, it, it's a remarkable skill. Before he can make his first flight on the cattle farm, Tim needs more training in Carnivon Gorge, a few hundred miles away. Four flying hours later at Becker's Outstation in the Australian Outback. Former students of Becker's fly tourists into Carnivon Gorge. No white man has ever entered the canyon. <laughs> A final rest before the real test begins. The cowboy trainees are about to fly through the gorge to get a sense of what the helicopter can do. Later on, when working alone on a cattle farm, Tim will often be hours away from help. For this reason, he needs to know his aircraft 100%. A lot of helicopter pilots uh, who aren't experienced in mountain flying tend to uh, run into difficulties when they're, if they're not thinking about the power that they have available. I, I got myself into a situation where, had I not been with an instructor or under training circumstances, I would have died. And that was the biggest eye-opener for me. Um, we, we were attempting an operation where we had limited power to get over a ridge. And being a trainee pilot, I just barreled on in there expecting to be able to do it. And then when, when my airspeed disappeared and I had no more power available to get out of the situation and we started to sink, yeah, that, that, that was the biggest lesson for me. At last, Tim has the chance to show what he's made of. 
he maintains an extremely difficult position with the helicopter in the air. On the agenda this afternoon, low-level flight techniques. Being able to chase cows successfully is being able to stop the helicopter quickly. And to do that, we need to know how to do a quick stop. And all the quick stop is, is being able to decelerate the helicopter quickly at a constant height. We don't want to hit trees, we don't want to hit cows, we don't want to hit power wires or anything. So if any of those obstacles come into view and we need to stop, we need to be able to stop the helicopter quickly. Not only must Tim master the so-called quick stops, but also low-level flying and quick maneuvers. Stubborn bulls in particular like to hide under trees and in low bushes. Rolleston, 5 a.m. The big day is like the morning after the night before, but Mike has no sympathy. With an icy three degrees outside, people are getting prepared for the big event. Uh, with my snoring? Yeah. Oh, I did try. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get something to eat. 30 flying minutes from Rolleston, Tim finally reaches his station. The White Horse Farm, 1,400 cattle over four hectares. This kind of space cannot be controlled using regular horses. Before he can start herding, the owner wants to capture a few bulls himself. The next bull is brought in for auction. Kim hasn't been flying for two years, so this is what we're calling a biennial flight review. Uh, it's on his property, so we're going to integrate the flight check with chasing some of his cows. Uh, so we've got a couple of paddocks we're going to look at. He's got uh, two big bullocks that we're going to go and get that are up in some suckers. Going to try and push them out, and he's got a girl that's going to throw them and tie them up. On the ground, cowgirl Melissa awaits her instructions by radio. She has to do the dirty work, bringing down the cattle. More and more women are taking up this job. Bulls are the capital of each farm and bring in the most amount of money. They need to be regularly captured and weighed in the rails until they are mature enough to be sold. Melissa and her assistant's desperate struggle will cost the owner a little more using the helicopter. He wants to afford this labor-saving device no more than two or three times a year. There's only one solution. Don't delegate, do it yourself. The helicopter needs to land. Kim wants to capture the bulls himself. They just don't know the technique. They weren't aggressive enough. Mm -mm. You gotta, it's a technique how you grab the tail and throw them. You don't just dangle around behind them. After the first flight, her maneuvers come in for some criticism. Someday Melissa wants to run her own farm. Today that's the last thing on her mind. I haven't had that much experience in pulling down cattle. It takes a bit of skill to get them on the right foot so you can pull them over. And I'm a bit of a chicken too. <laughs> I don't want to get run over. Just about do something and then the guard flew off the four wheels. His morning flight gave Tim some completely new aspects of his dream job. Yeah, I can see why it's such a dangerous uh, pastime. Yeah, it's one, probably one of the most dangerous uh, parts of uh, helicopter flying, so um, yeah, you've got to be switched on. You don't want to do it on a hangover. <laughs> After making the required flight hours and nine months of drudgery, Tim's goal of being a cowboy is finally within reach. Now it's his turn. Well, the main thing is uh, you don't don't let adrenaline get a, in 
in the way too much. All right? you, as soon as that happens, you start getting faster and faster and faster, and as, then you start pushing the machine a bit too hard, and you start making mistakes. Just try and relax, back off, and then just, just keep, just fly the helicopter first. Don't go getting that last cow if, if you can't get it and, wreck, and trying to wreck the machine getting it. So just relax, we'll have a bit of fun, and uh, we'll just keep the RPM in the green range there. Okay. We'll try. <laughs> and uh, preferably no overspeeds, yeah. good. And we'll, uh, and we'll just take it easy. couple of situations where you're you're flying in amongst a, a load of trees and you, you're so worried that the, the blades could hit a tree or you could catch a skid on the cow or something and, and get yourself into a real situation. It's a, at one point there was a, 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 we were on the ground and trying to shoo a cow out of the trees and, and, and I was on the controls ready to lift off because it looked like this cow was about to charge the helicopter and, and that's a pretty scary moment when you have an 800 kilo cow facing you and, and ready to run at you and, and you just got to be off the ground as quick as you can. After an exhausting bull chase, specialist Mike Becker drives the captives into the gate. What you find happens is, is when you go work for a mustering company, they'll put you on as what they call a slave. So you're going to work in the hangar because it's very important that you know how to fix your helicopter. You might be a thousand miles away from an engineer and you're going to have to fix it or get the helicopter in the air yourself. When you're ready to go flying, you'll probably end up flying with a senior pilot for anywhere between one and two hundred hours. All right, the 10 hours training is just the bare minimum. Most companies like to fly with you for 100 to 200 hours before they'll even let you go out chasing the cattle. Another thing they like you to do is having worked with cattle on the ground. So if you can spend 12 months riding on a horse chasing cows, your chances of getting a job cattle mustering are, are a lot higher than if you just are a pilot that wants to go chasing cows. Tim's first job on the ground. The aggressive bulls need to be separated from the cows in the gate and end up in separate enclosures. This job alone would normally take Kim and Melissa two days. Tomorrow I have my commercial test. It's, it's been one hell of a journey. The license is really just a license to go and practice. It's, I've, I've met the legal requirements to be a helicopter pilot, but I'm far from experienced as a helicopter pilot, and, and that's next. I, I need to learn the experience. As a professional pilot, Tim has about a thousand more flying hours ahead of him to have a realistic chance of working for a cattle farm. Next year will be all about spraying fields, ferrying tourists about, and cleaning helicopters. Only then, can he make the jump from computer slave to flying cowboy?